So thank you everyone today for joining us on a workshop about exploring Kaltura features. My name is Megan Holt. I'm an instructional support coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. And joining me today is my colleague, Michael Strunk. He's an instructional support specialist. If you have Hi. any questions, there he is. Uh, if you have any questions, though, you know, please feel free to uh, send one of us or both of us an email. Okay. Um, one of us today is going to be presenting, and then the other person will be monitoring the chat pod. So, um, you know, we're going to bounce back and forth, so you'll get to hear from both of us today. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to raise a hand, turn on your microphone, or you can just type in that chat pod. So this is a little bit about uh, what's on the agenda today. I know we've only got an hour, so uh, we'll try to squeeze it all in. Uh, we will start off with the Kaltura overview. Probably by now you've heard of it. Um, maybe you want to know a little bit more about what is it um, actually able to do for you. So we'll start with that. Um, and then Michael Strunk is going to lead us into the demonstration piece. And this point, you're going to learn about uh, something called Express Capture. So if you're brand new to uh, Kaltura or even video recording, this is a great place to start. I think of it kind of as the selfie of videos. Um, we're also going to talk to you about a media upload. So this is where you can take some of your existing video content and add it to your Kaltura account. And Michael will talk to you a little bit about um, how to do that and why you would do that. Um, and then we're going to do a brief overview on a video quiz feature. We do have a separate workshop devoted just to the video quiz, so today it'll be more of an overview. Um, but just kind of get your feet wet so you can hear a little bit about that. And then we'll talk about something called a YouTube index. So um, this is a phrase that was coined by one of our colleagues, and I can talk to you a little bit about why you would integrate YouTube videos into your Kaltura account. And then last but not least, I will um, follow up with the Kaltura Capture. Kaltura Capture is really great for instructors who maybe want to record a lecture. Um, so we get a lot of questions about this piece. Um, that's probably where my main focus will be for today. And then once you've reviewed all the different options for you know, adding or creating video content, we're going to take a look at how to place that into your actual Blackboard course. Um, at which point, um, after that, we'll come back together as a group, talk about maybe some of the benefits of Kaltura, and of course, we'll have the main follow-up um, and wrap-up for questions. So um, I think the first thing that I probably would like to do here is I'm going to create a poll. Um, I'm going to send a question across the screen at you, so give me just a moment to type that, and I just kind of want to get a little bit of feedback from each of you. Okay, so right about now you should see a quiz in the center of your screen, so you can just elect the answer um, that you feel best represents you. This gives us a little bit of a feel um, how you're using Kaltura. Uh, we know that our instructors get to choose if you're a Blackboard Ultra, Blackboard Original user, um, maybe some of you use both. Okay, great. So it looks like uh, the bulk of you probably use Original, but I see some Ultra in there as well. So, um, you know, we'll cover both options today. All right, thank you. So let's just start out a little bit with what is Kaltura? We've, we've heard this name. We know it's out there. So um, Kaltura is the 
video platform that has been adopted by NIU. Uh, we, I think, probably officially adopted it uh, back around March. So we've had it for a little while now. Um, but it is a comprehensive, robust, campus-wide video platform. So again, this means it's available to everybody. Um, we're talking faculty, staff, and students. So what can it do for you? All right, well, we're gonna discuss that today. We're, we're going to try to give you an overview um, about all of the different features that Kaltura has to offer. So um, maybe once you've decided which features appeal to you the most, um, you'll know kind of where to focus your attention. You can upload, create, um, publish, share, and edit videos. So I know we probably won't get into the editing function today, um, but it really, it does have all of these different features you can utilize. You can take your videos and create interactive quizzes with them. Um, again, I think I mentioned earlier, we do have a separate workshop just devoted to quiz creation, uh, but this might be something that appeals to you. You can take uh, some type of video content and then your students have to answer questions on it. And you can decide whether or not you want this graded or ungraded. If any of you ever used Medial as a campus solution before, uh, we've replaced it now with Kaltura. So um, if you had any video content before from Medial, we already went ahead and we brought it over for you. So the first time you open your Kaltura account, um, you'll see your old video content there. So I don't want anyone to feel that they lost anything. Kaltura is separate from Blackboard, but one of the reasons that we went with it is that it is closely integrated with Blackboard. So this means that you can take your videos um, and with you know just a couple of clicks, bring it over into your Blackboard course. Your students will be able to click on a link that you provide um, and they'll just be able to watch any of your video content. So the other feature is um, something called Media Space, and we call this the public portal. I think today we're really going to focus on how to access Kaltura through Blackboard, since that's what most of our faculty and instructors are interested in. They want to take their video content you know, and bring it to their students through Blackboard. But if you ever wanted to share your video content publicly, maybe with somebody outside of NIU, you can also do that. Um, and so it has a website called Media Space. Um, so again, lots of sharing capabilities that we can offer. I think at this point, uh, Michael is probably going to take over and start us off with a demonstration. He's going to lead us into how to access your Kaltura account. Um, if you have any questions, though, feel free to type away in the chat pod. All right, thank you, Megan. Um, yeah, I'll just pause here for a second while I share my screen. Um, if anybody does has a, have a question, this is a good time to ask. Um, but I will say that um, during our presentation today, if you do have a question, um, feel free to either type in the chat pod, raise your hand, or um, you know, if there's a break in the conversation, feel free to hop on the mic um, and ask your question. We're always always like hearing from you. So I am going to um, just share my screen here. Give me just a second. All right. Can everybody see that? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, it's not it's... coming. Okay, it should come through in a second. Okay, now we can see it. All right. So, um, and I hope you see the institution page. So this is where you're going to land when you um, first log into Blackboard. And um, what, at least when I started using Kaltura, one of the things that initially confused me was the fact that I could access Kaltura from inside my course and from um, here on the institution page. Um, and although the places that the media gallery it took me to looked very similar. Um, the one you need to use when you want to create uh, anything or edit anything is uh, located on the tools tab, which is right down here. Um, and if you click on this tools tab, um, what you'll do is you'll get a number of selections and you want to click on Kaltura My Media. Um, what this does is this takes you to your media space 
Um, and if you've had, um, and it'll look something like this. If you don't, um, if you haven't added any, added any videos, you won't see anything. But um, as Megan mentioned, we did migrate medial content. So um, if you had uh, videos that were in medial, you should see something. Um, but what's important is that you remember that you have to use that tools tab on the um, landing page, on the base navigation page, in order to do anything to interact, like edit your video. So if you want to create a video or edit an existing video or create a video quiz out of an existing video, you have to go through um, the tools tab and into your My Media space. Um, it is a pretty um, straightforward as far as using it goes. Um, and, um, you know, as you might have guessed, if you want to add something, you're just going to click this Add New button. Um, now, when you first come into Kaltura, I'm not, I, it's been a while since I've done it. I don't know if it will ask you to download the player just by clicking Add New or if you have to click Kaltura Capture. But um, one of the things you do have to do is install um, the Kaltura Media Capture um, software. So you will be prompted to do that. Um, but once you've done that, then you have to sort of close out and hop back into your media space before you'll actually see it. Um, I'm sure that Megan will cover that a little more. Um, one of the things I want to touch on before we get into creating and uploading videos is that it does take a little time for videos to process. So um, just because you've uploaded it doesn't mean it's going to be available right away. Um, the time to process is generally dependent on how big the video is to begin with. Um, obviously, longer videos will take longer to process. Um, and captions will be added automatically. Um, this is a machine captioning service, so it's not 100% accurate, but it is pretty good. Um, but the captions do take a little bit longer to show up, so just be patient. But they should be there within a day, I would think. Um, the other thing I want to mention real quick is that when you create media, um, you will have an opportunity to add tags to it. Um, make sure that you are using your tags because uh, Kaltura does not have a way to organize your content other than the tags. So those are going to be how you search your um, videos. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a problem if you just have a few videos, but if you have uh, a number of videos stored on the service or you've been adding videos for a number of years, um, you want to make sure that you are using those tags so that you can search for those videos. Um, I would suggest, you know, like I said, don't skimp. So add your course uh, is a good tag to add. Um, possibly the semester or year, um, topic tags, you know, what discipline it belongs in. You know, you can add really as many as you want, but that's a great way to stay organized. All right, so um, as I said, if we want to add media or create media, we have to come to our My Media page, and we're going to click this Add New um, button to open this pop-up menu. Now, there are several um, options here. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Express Capture, because what that is, is that's just you and your webcam. Okay, it's quick and easy. Um, and it's great for things like uh, short introductions for say, um, module content or, you know, readings, um, you might want to introduce a video, um, you might want to introduce yourself. Um, or you might want to give a quick little um, video intro to say an assessment or something just to kind of, um, you know, give your students a little something else, a little, you know, a little extra help when it comes to um, the content you're asking them to interact with. Um, but all you have to do is click Express Capture. And I got to open my video thing. Here's me. Hi. Um, and you can see I've, I'm pretty dark in here. But uh, uh, all you have to do to record is click this button. Um, and start talk. You'll get a little countdown, and you start talking. Um, I'm not going to record anything right now because I just wanted to show that to you. Um, but what'll happen is when you're done recording, you can preview it, save it. You'll be asked to add tags, things like that, um, and then it'll appear on your list here. 
another thing you can do instead of like using your webcam to create video is to upload media that you already have, right? Videos you've already created. And you do that coming over here and using the media upload. Um, now, when you click this, uh, you'll come in here, you'll get your media upload file or media upload page. Um, you can either drag and drop or click the choose a file to upload. You'll get your standard um, window open. You can search for your file, select it, and add it. Um, this uh, service is pretty robust. It seems to take quite a few different types of media files. Um, I have not, I you know, I have not tried to upload every single type of media file out there, but uh, I have yet to have a problem uploading a file. Um, but again, once you've uploaded that, then it'll appear on your list, and you can start. Um, once you've got it uploaded, that's when you can start to um, interact with it and manipulate it. Um, there are a couple of ways to get into your editing functions. So um, for example, I can click on the title here, or I can click on actually this pencil, I'm sorry. Um, and if I click this pencil, um, what that does is it opens my um, editing window. Um, this You can see where I've got some tags attached. Um, and if I want to edit my video, I can click Launch Editor right here. Okay. Um, also, I can get to that same spot, if I get back here, by clicking the media and coming down here to Actions and clicking Launch Editor. This is also, by clicking the media and um, I believe it's caption and enrich. And this is where you can edit your um, captions if you need to. Um, again, we're just kind of touching on this, but you'll click this pencil and that um, allows you to watch your video and um, it plays the um, transcript alongside so that you can um, edit your captions. All right, let me head back to the My Media page. All right, the other thing I want to hit on real quickly, and um, as Megan mentioned, we do have a um, workshop that's actually dedicated to this, is our video quiz. Um, now, to do this, um, this is a little different than uploading or creating media, because what you have to do is take a video that you've already created and then turn that into video quiz. So what happens is, is when you click on video quiz, you will be taking, taken to a list of your media that you will select and um, you can select from, I should say, um, to create your video quiz. Uh, it is important to remember to edit your video before you want to create your quiz, uh, because if you try to edit afterwards, it'll mess things up. Um, it's also important to remember to edit um, your video before you mess with the captions, um, because again, any edits done after the captions are corrected will mess things up. Um, and uh, when I say edit your video in, <laughs> Kaltura, it is very limited. All you can really do is take things out. Um, so if you have a stumble in your presentation, you can cut that out. Uh, it automatically brings the two sides together so you don't have to worry about it. It's a seamless transition. Um, but all you can really do is remove stuff. You cannot rearrange clips or um, like add, like create videos out of separate clips. Um, it all has to be done in one take and sort of, and sequentially. But uh, once you've created your media, then you're gonna, to create a video quiz, it's, it's pretty slick. All you do is you come over here and you're gonna click on video quiz. Um, again, you find your media, video, whatever that you wanna turn into a quiz uh, and you will select it. And that launches this um, quiz editor. To add a question, all you have to do is either play the video or scrub this bar along to the point where you want to add a question. Um, so I'm just going to play the media here. And then when I, I'm at a spot, you know, I want to add a question, all I have to do is click add a question down here. And you have just a few choices. 
Um, multiple choice and true false are pretty self-explanatory. Um, but reflection point uh, really isn't a question. It's more of a pause in the video. Uh, you can certainly ask a question, but it's really designed for students to just take a second um, to pause and they can, you know, take a take a minute to sort of process the information that they just received. Um, and then there's also this open-ended question. Um, this is more of an essay type question. Keep in mind that um, this is, it does have, I think, a 270 character limit. So you can't ask questions that are too involved, um, but you can certainly ask open-ended ended questions with that. Um, over here on the side, you have um, areas you can click on to adjust some of the details, um, how you want to show it, the title, um, how you want to score, and then this, which um, allows people to change and skip over answers. Um, you can add really as many questions as you want to your video, um, but do keep in mind that one thing you can't do is put questions too close together because that has the effect of blocking um, the questions underneath essentially. So um, if you try to add like three questions at the same spot, um, students will only be able to access one. Um, and what that means is then they can't actually, won't be able to get to those questions, so they can't complete the quiz um, and they can't actually like, especially if it's graded, they won't be able to submit it. So uh, just keep that in mind. You don't wanna put your questions too close together. Um, and anyway, once you've added all your questions in your video and you're happy, all you have to do is click done. And then I'm going to preview it. I can preview it or I can go to my media page. And it should, let's see, it should have, I, I guess, yeah, see, so now you can see um, that it's created a quiz. It gives this little introductory slide to let students know that they're gonna be asked questions and the answers will be submitted. All right, I think that's about it for my part of the de demonstration. I believe that um, Megan is going to take over from here and show us about YouTube indexing. Let me stop sharing here. I am. While we're shuffling screens, if anyone has any questions, you know, give a shout. Uh, now's a great time. All right. Okay. So can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. All right, fantastic. So again, I'm gonna go um, back into Kaltura here. Uh, I'm gonna go through tools. I know Mike mentioned, you know, the first time that you log in, it's going to ask you to download. So if you've never used Kaltura before, I do want to um, just send out a quick reminder, make sure the first time you log in um, that you're on a regular computer, use a, a Mac or a PC, your choice. Um, just try not to use a mobile device. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm just gonna hop in here. All right, so here are all of my lovely videos. Okay, and you can click the add new button. Kaltura is pretty good about um, giving you navigational buttons that are blue. So these kind of tell you you can add something new or you can go back. I have tried extensively to break Kaltura and I, I do think I'm pretty good at breaking things. Um, and it, it's a pretty solid system. If you can't find your back button or the add new, uh, just X out of it and come back into Kaltura. You won't hurt anything. So here is the YouTube index feature. So you're probably wondering, well, why would I be using this? Um, one of the best things about Kaltura is that um, any video content that you accrue here in your library, um, you can create a direct link into your Blackboard course, but it's not eating up any of your course data. Um, and this is really important because um, if any of you have large uh, videos, or maybe you have been embedding uh, 
um, your PowerPoint slides that contain videos, you might have received warnings that you're about to run out of data. So this is a way around it. It eliminates that because um, you're just creating a link. You're, you're not using up that precious course data that's very limited. And one of the nice features here is what we call the YouTube index. And this will allow you to take a video from YouTube uh, put it in your course and it's going to strip away any of the commercials and advertisements that are typically associated with YouTube videos. So this will give your students that uninterrupted video viewing experience. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go right here, click on YouTube. All right, and it's asking me to put a URL link. So I already have open um, in another tab here, uh, YouTube. So let's flip over here. All right, I think I was looking for TED Talks. Okay, so maybe this is my video right here that I want to add, right? I can click on it. And here I already have an advertisement, see? So I'm just going to take the um, URL, I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna go back to my, my other tab here. And I'm going to paste it in. It's going to ask me to preview it. And here's my video. So um, it gives me a couple of different options here. Now um, it it has the name of the video as it was entered um, on YouTube, as well as the description. I can change those um, because this is how the title and the description will appear once I link to it in my Blackboard course. I'm not the owner of this YouTube video, so I'm not changing anything on YouTube. I'm just changing it for how it would appear maybe for my students. Um, if I want to add tags, remember, I think Mike was talking about those. This is great for helping me find this video at a later date. So um, I can put anything I want that'll help me find this at a later date. I can put keywords. So I put success. Uh, maybe I want to put the course that I'm going to put it in. You know, put a date for a year, you know, um, anything that I want. I do not need to change anything about this publishing status. Um, actually, I encourage you just to completely ignore it. We've already configured this appropriately at the admin level. So um, just go ahead and click Save. I think I, I think I saved it. Try that again. <laughs> OK, there it goes. So it says, your changes have been saved. So now I can go back to my media. This will take me back to my Kaltura library. Or if I just go to media, this will just take me to this individual video. I'm going to go back to my full library. And here it is. So here is the YouTube video. Um, it strips away any commercials, any advertisements. Now I can link my students to a YouTube video, um, and there's no interruptions. Again, a I want to emphasize, we call this the YouTube index feature because you don't own this video, which means if the YouTube owner ever takes this video down, you will lose the video. Um, it will no longer appear in your library and that link that you created in your course will also disappear. So um, basically we're, we're borrowing it and we're just taking away all the commercials. So hopefully that explained it all. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Kaltura Capture piece, which is probably the most widely requested piece, um, unless there are any questions. No? OK. So now let's talk about Kaltura Capture. And um, Kaltura Capture, I like to think of it as kind of replacing an overhead projector, right? If you were- hey, Megan, could I no. interrupt you for just a second? Yeah. Uh, Shinar yes. has a question. Do you want to hop on the mic and uh, ask? Yes, I have a question regarding, um, it's good that um, you can upload everything to Kaltura, right? But the thing is like, how do you embed it into main Blackboard page so that students do not have to go to Kaltura. Instead, they can uh, navigate those Kaltura videos that are, that are relevant to the course modules. So how do you, what do you recommend? Like up downloading those videos first and then 
like embedding them into the relevant section of the cost modules? Great question, and I promise we're going to get to that next. Right now, we're looking at this kind of from the instructor perspective of how do I how do I generate my media content? How do I how do I record it? How do I upload it? Um, and then um, as soon as I'm done here, Mike is actually going to take over, and he's going to show you how to put it specifically in your uh, Blackboard course. All right, thank you. Sure. Okay, so um, this is, I think, probably the, the next requested piece. And, um, you know, if you are in a face to face classroom, I know it's been a while, but we still remember it, right? Um, you might have something that you put on some type of overhead projector. So, um, you know, you could be sharing um, a chart, you could be sharing a document, maybe um, if you had your computer in front of you with a projector, you could be sharing a web page with your students. Um, and you would ask them to, to look at whatever this um, piece of information is. And while this is going on, they would hear your voice kind of narrating it, explaining the important aspects of, of what they need to learn. But a student could also turn around in their chair, conceivably, um, and they could look at you. They could see your face. So in a way, I think of Kaltura Capture as kind of simulating that experience in a remote or online environment. So let me show you what that looks like. We're again going to go to this blue Add New button. And here's Kaltura Capture. OK. So it is asking me if it can open Kaltura. And I'm going to say yes. The very first time you use it, it may say that it wants to download it to your computer. Don't be alarmed. Say yes. All right. Here it is. You should see the circle. It's kind of popping up. So um, hopefully everybody can see this. This is what it looks like a little control panel. Um, this is my um, basically my buttons that, that allow me to um, record. So a couple of things to know about Kaltura Capture is um, it has a screen recording function. So it can record anything that I can pull up on my computer screen, you name it, um, an Excel spreadsheet, a Word document, a web page, um, you name it, right? Anything that I can pull up on my computer screen, I can now record and share with my students. So that's what this button is right here. Anytime you see something in blue, that means that it's on and it's active. If you see something that's grayed out with a slash through it, it's turned off. Now, my camera is turned off because I'm using it right now in our Collaborate session for this workshop. By default, it is turned on, though. Um, so just use your imagination. I promise, ordinarily, when you turn this on, you'll see the camera button lit up in blue. So. Um, you can turn it off if you don't like that feature, but basically it has two cameras. It's trying to record whatever's on your screen, and then there's going to be your webcam that's trained on you. So um, I like to caution you about this because we've had faculty who thought that only their screen recording function was turned on, and so they were sitting on their sofa in their PJs, um, and when they were done recording, they realized um, that they showed up, you know, in the in the recording. So if that bothers you, just go ahead and turn it off and make sure it looks gray like this. And of course you have the audio feature. So this is so your students can hear your voice narration. Okay. You have two different options on how you want to record. You can do full screen, which means that every single thing that is open on your uh, computer screen is being recorded. So like right now you can see that I have some different tabs open. OK, um, this is all being picked up with the full screen recording. Um, similarly, if you only have one screen, like for instance, right now, I'm just using a laptop. I don't have two computer screens. Um, this uh, lovely little control panel um, will show up in the recording. So it's important, uh, you know, once I hit this red record button um, to shrink this so that it doesn't um, doesn't take up the screen, all right? It, it would be very distracting for somebody who's watching this recording. Or I could do a select area. A select area allows me to pick and choose what I want recorded, okay? So maybe I don't want everybody to see my open tabs. Like I just want them to see a PowerPoint or a Word document, um, at which point I would tell you to probably, you know, 
um, pick your Word document, whatever that may be, or, you know, um, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, whatever it is that you want to record, um, and then do the select area. When you choose the select area, you're going to see this uh, square appear. Uh, pardon me, square appear, <laughs> and you can you can pull it out, right? You can kind of customize it um, here, and you would hit confirm. And this square is going to turn into a red border. Anything that's inside the red border is now going to be recorded and it'll be visible um, you know, to your audience. I'm going to cancel because I don't really feel like recording this right now. Um, something to note about this is that don't go too small. Um, you start to lose focus and clarity, especially if you're using things like an Excel spreadsheet, uh, you know, all those little cells, you really want those to be um, bright and big and easy for people to see. I think a good rule of thumb is try to make it around two-thirds of the size of your screen. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit now about what it looks like. So we're, um, I'll shrink that too, okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the start recording and it's going to give me a countdown. It's even going to warn me that it's start it's recording. All right, so now everything is already being recorded. Um, again, I can, you know, choose to um, navigate to different tabs. If I do the full screen, anything that I click on is going to be recorded. Um, something that's kind of interesting here is I have this little pencil icon. I can click on this um, and I have tools. So if I wanted to point to something very important, like I could do an arrow. Um, I can change its color. I can make it thin or fat. Let me get a big fat one, right? And this will show up in the recording, which is great. Uh, if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, though, just remember that you're not actually editing the PowerPoint presentation. Clearly, I'm not editing this Google tab that I have open, um, but it'll stay on the screen until I remember to delete it. So you might want to remember to delete it. Right. You can do text. Um, so this just helps when you're trying to create a recording and, you know, you're not in that classroom space with your students. You, you want to draw their focus to something important. These tools help you with that. All right. At the end of the recording, uh, I can click stop. I can also pause a recording. If I pause a recording, I can resume it. If I stop a recording, it's completely over and now I need to start a new one. says, are you sure you want to stop? Yes. Okay, so then this screen comes up and um, again, I have the option right away. I can change the title, I can give it a description, I can add some tags. I can also go back in at a date and change any of that information too. Um, and I can, I can preview it, I can push play and I can listen to my recording and decide if I want to keep it. Um, if I don't like it, then I can, uh, I can delete it and I can start again and I can do a new recording right up here. So it's your choice out. You know, do you want to save and upload it or do you want to delete it? I can, I can click save and upload, that's fine. It's pending, it's going to start uploading to my Kaltura account. A good rule of thumb with this is that however long your recording is, is how long it's going to take to upload. So if you have a 15 minute recording, expect it to take at least 15 minutes to upload to your Kaltura account. Um, it's not an exact science, but that's a good rule of thumb. One thing that we really like to stress is to try to do shorter recordings. And I, I know a lot of people are resistant to this, but there's a lot of sound advice behind it. Uh, first and foremost is if you have a lecture and anything goes wrong, you know, you have a power outage, your internet goes down, anything happens, uh, if you have a big long recording, then you have to redo the whole thing. So, oh, see mine was already been uploaded. That's fantastic. I can get out of here. Oops, pardon me, wrong screen. Um, you know, another thing that we like to talk about, though, with recordings is that students are very different from a remote location than they are um, in a face-to-face -face environment, right? 
our students are at home right now. They have a lot of distractions. They have a lot of things going on. It's difficult to get a student to sit down and watch a full hour long recording. So again, if you can break it up into pieces, they are more likely to sit down and watch a 10 to 15 minute segment, you know, maybe then go and make dinner or take out the trash or check on their kids. Uh, and then they'll come back and they'll watch the next 10 or 15 minute clip. So I'm not saying take your hour long lecture and try to stuff it into 15 minutes. I'm simply saying maybe take your hour long recording and divide it up into, you know, four pieces, four or five. So um, at this point, you know, uh, my recording is kind of finished. I can probably just X out of here and come back in. I always struggle to find that back button so I don't bother. Here it is. Um, if this was a longer recording, you would probably see something where it looks like a gear icon and it, say, and it would say that my recording is being processed. That happens, you know, especially the longer the recording, the more time it takes to, um, to process. Don't be panicked about that. That happens. So you just have to have a little bit of patience. But again, another good reason to try to make sure that you record in smaller clips. So, um, I know that was pretty quick. Let me show you what an example of a really good recording like this looks like. So, um, I need to find one of my old PowerPoint recordings. So, I have a lot of videos, so again, these tags are coming in handy. Videos, uh, I think we forgot to mention, do auto tag. So, as you record, Kaltura is looking for keywords, things that you repeat and say frequently. And so it's going to put those as uh, tags, but you can also add your own. So that's really nice because again, there's no sorting feature here. We can't organize our videos by, you know, folder or anything like that. Okay. So here is an old PowerPoint um, that I recorded with Kaltura Capture. Let me put this on here. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Remember I said that it has three pieces when you use Kaltura Capture, and you can turn them off. Um, but if you use all, all three features, so this blue background simplifying the college essay, this is actually my PowerPoint slide. See, it was from 2017. I had my webcam on, so here I am down in the bottom right corner. By default, NIU has created it so that whatever you're sharing on your screen fills the page. And if you have your webcam on, you're down here in this little corner. Uh, now, if you have your webcam on, your students are going to have the ability, though, to change views. So do you see these little arrows here in this little, um, this little slide? So see, they could switch. There I was in my basement. If I, if I don't like that, um, maybe I shouldn't turn my webcam on, okay? Um, something else they could do is maybe they like the side-by-side. -side. Maybe they want to see you and see the PowerPoint, okay? Um, so they have different options. Oops. So if that bothers you, again, I, I would encourage you to turn your webcam off. Um, we can only control it to some extent. Like I can't, I can't change the size of this video here. It's already been pre-programmed. So um, just keep that in mind. And I know you guys can't hear the sound. I, I didn't enable that for you, but as I play this, um, you know, I can hear my sound going and you know, there's the slide and there's me talking, right? I don't know, do I switch slides? I can't remember. This was just a demonstration piece. So, um, But as I would go and progress through the slides, then this is what people would see in the recording. So I feel like that was pretty quick. Um, do I have any questions? Uh, somebody asked where the captions would show up. So the captions will show up down here at the bottom. Um, Probably, um, let me see. I might have the my, my library's bottom is yeah. um, 
can help that's where you turn them on and off that took me a few times to find that yeah um yeah so you'd want to select english i think is probably why they're not showing yeah they're, yeah they're i i kind of usually turn them off because this is my my library is filled with sample junk videos <laughs> so mm -hmm. um but here we go so here they come up See, ah, there. This is a, a very old PowerPoint, but yes. This is a good example of, of, you know, I'm trying to simulate what would have happened if I had a PowerPoint lecture in class. Now I can do it kind of from a remote environment. So I just thought that would be a good example of, of showing you what this, what this recording actually looks like in its final form. And again, if I can't find that back button, I can always X out of here. Um, but here I am, I'm back to my, my Kaltura library with all my videos. So, um, you know, I do encourage you, I hope today that you get your feet wet with Kaltura and then you're, um, just go ahead and make some sample videos. You know, I, I hope you, you experiment, it, nothing happens. This is your own private library. Um, once you start adding videos, experimenting, even if they're complete junk, nobody else is going to see it but you until you um, link to it in your, your Blackboard course. And I know we're running out of time, so I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to let Mike show you how to embed these videos now that you have them in your Blackboard course. So. Thank you, Megan. Uh, give me a second just to share my screen again. And just waiting. All right, can everybody see the tools tab on the base landing page? We all good yep. there? We're good. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so now um, we want, We've created our videos, right? They're in our Kaltura My Media um, space. Uh, so now we need to put them in our course. Um, it's it's pretty quick and easy to embed videos, which is one of the things I really like about Kaltura. As Megan mentioned earlier, um, it is also, um, since Kaltura is hosting the videos, the, the size does not count against your size quota for your course. Um, and as I'm sure you all know, video files eat up a lot of space. Um, so that does save you a lot of hassles. Um, and once they're in your Kaltura Media Gallery, they're easy to share in multiple courses. So first thing I'm gonna do is just show you how to embed in an ultra course. Um, you're gonna notice that um, there are several different ways to embed, but they're all kind of similar. Um, you can embed videos in modules, you can embed them in folders, um, you can embed in assignments or tests, or you can also embed them in documents. There's a lot of different places to put them. Um, I'll start just real quick with the module and the folder um, are both pretty similar, right? To embed a Kaltura video in a module, you would just uh, click to open the module. You're gonna wanna click this plus icon, and then you're gonna click content market, okay? If I want to add it to a folder, I would open my folder, and I would just select content market. It's gonna take you both to the same spot, um, which is our content market. And what you wanna do is scroll down to uh, find what you're looking for. Um, do be cautious, there are a few different choices here. What we're looking to do is just embed our video. So we're gonna click Kaltura video. Uh, and when we do that, we'll be taken back to our list of media. And then all we have to do to embed that media is click the blue embed key. And now you can see that this is embedded in here. All right, um, if I wanted to say um, create that, um, I can also put videos in a document. Um, document, I think Kaltura uses it, or excuse me, Blackboard uses it a little different um, then normally you would think of it, normally you think kind of of a Word document, but really a document in Blackboard is kind of a stripped down, um, stripped down web page, I guess. Um, but one of the, 
ways you can add content, right? This is I'm going to create it and I'm just going to click add content here. Um, and what that does is it opens up this text editor. You're going to see this text editor in a lot of different places. Um, and you add your videos the same way, pretty much. Um, you're going to click this plus icon. Um, and then you're going to need to select the appropriate option. Um, you'll get different options depending on what view and where you're at. Um, but in this case, what we want to do is insert, edit, an LTI item. And when we do that, we come back to our content market, and it's the same process. Um, we find Kaltura Video. It opens up our lists, and we click Embed. Uh, it's going to ask me to give it a name. Um, I'm not going to do that now just because I'm in a hurry. Um, but what that does then, as you can see, um, it embeds that video inside your document. Um, now, this text editor allows you to create other things. You can uh, put text in here. Um, you can attach a file. Um, so you can really create kind of a, a robust learning document just by doing that. Um, but we're going to close out of this right now. Um, and finally, um, if I wanted to add um, to an assessment, uh, again, I'm going to click my plus icon to do this. In Ultra, I'm going to find either an assignment or test. This I'm just going to use an assignment this time. Uh, I'm going to create my assignment. Um, again, click the plus icon to start building my assignment. This time, I want to I want to get to that text editor, so I'm going to need to click Add Text. And you can see we have the same text editor. Uh, this time I click the plus icon. Um, here I click insert LTI item and away I go. Um, it works the same way in a test. Um, you're going to do the same thing. So you can actually add video content to your assignments and tests. Um, that's in Ultra. Let's head over to um, an original course real quick. It is a little bit different um, as far as embedding videos go. Um, you want to select the content area that you want to put your video in. So uh, let's here, I'll go to my Kaltura test area. That'll be a little easier. Um, and this time, um, if I want to have my um, videos standing alone, I'm going to click, I'm going to hover over build content. I'm going to come down on my list here. And again, I want to be careful because I don't want to click Kaltura video quiz. That's a different animal. I'm clicking Kaltura video to add it. Um, and again, the same type of thing. All I got to do is click embed and it takes us back. And um, you can see this was put down at the bottom because in original, everything gets shoved to the bottom of the course. Um, you can also um, put this in as part of an item. Um, so when you create your item, again, you'll see you've got this text editor here. Um, this time when you click the plus icon though, you'll get, um, a, a few different options, but you're going to want to click Kaltura Media uh, in this instance, which will take you again to your um, list where you embed your item. I know I'm going kind of fast through that. Um, it really is, um, you know, there, it you kind of embed everything the same way in the text editor. It's just a matter of knowing which one to click. Um, but that's just sort of a, a quick and easy way to do it. Um, if you, let's just go real quick, let's talk about um, embedding a quiz. Um, do that. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to click Kaltura Video Quiz. Uh, it brings me back to this thing. I need to find my quiz on my list and click Embed to put it in there. And once it's in there, you can see right here. Um, now that it's in there, um, if I want to modify the parameters of the quiz in terms of points and things like that, I'm going to need to click that round down arrow and click edit. Uh, and that brings me to my um, link information and I can switch the amount of points up here. Um, I can put a due date in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I know I went through that really fast because we're running out of time um, and I wanted to leave a chance to answer questions. So does anybody have um, questions about embedding videos? All right. 
All right, I don't hear anything, so I'm going to turn it back over to Megan to wrap up. All right, here we go. So um, I've got just a couple of things here to help you out. So some benefits of Kaltura. Um, it's easy to access through Blackboard. It does not consume that Blackboard data. So if you are one of those people who ever received um, an alert that you've used up all of your Blackboard data, um, this is a way around it. We, we know how frustrating that is. Um, it does have basic video editing functions. They are very basic, nothing fancy, but they are there. So if you sneeze in the middle of your recording, we can crop that out. Um, Students can also use Kaltura. So a lot of times we keep thinking like we need to record our lectures and just give it to the students. Well, you know, fair is fair. It, you can ask your students to turn around and do their own recording for an assignment. And although we didn't um, get to talk about it today, you can use Kaltura from uh, a Mac, a PC, and it also has a pretty good um, cell phone mobile app. And if we know one thing about our students, we know that they have a cell phone. So they could do their own recording you know, with their phone, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that because um, you just use the media upload and you can you know, actually the app you can upload directly to Kaltura, it shows up in your um, media library. So it's a very, very easy way to, to do quick videos. I know Kaltura has a lot to offer. Uh, you know, like I said, the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning is available. So is uh, myself, and Michael, and you know, if any questions, let us know. We also have our own web page devoted to Kaltura. So um, this even has step-by-step -step instructions. We've divided it up so there are instructions for faculty and instructors. And there are also a separate set of instructions for your students. So if you want them to use it, you don't have to train them. They can just go straight to our website and learn how to use it. And whew, I feel like we we did a marathon. I know we're probably going to go a little bit over, but we can stay. And um, you know, if we have any questions, please let us know. the The floor is all yours. So thank you. Yes, Mike just put the uh, link to our website um, in the chat. I know a lot of you probably have to bolt. Thank you for sticking with us. Yeah, we're more than willing to hang out if you have questions. Great. And I'm going to turn off the recording now.